In the following tutorial, we will be examining a power supply that outputs 20 watts of thermal energy. This tutorial will help us understand the material heat transfer that occurs within a power supply while it's running. Additionally, it will increase our understanding of solid mechanics and finite element analysis, as well as developing skills using ANSYS AIM. We will be looking to find if the power supply will be operating under its safe conditions of 60 degrees Celsius. The aluminum used in this analysis has a density of 2,770 kilograms per meter cubed and an isotropic thermal conductivity at 100 degrees Celsius of 165 watts per meter Celsius. The steel has a density of 7,850 kilograms per meter cubed and an isotropic thermal conductivity of 60.5 watts per meter Celsius. The copper has a density of 8,978 kilograms per meter cubed and an isotropic thermal conductivity of 400 watts per meter Celsius. For our boundary conditions, it is assumed that the power supply is open, there is a low speed flow of air, and the power supply is regulated to output 115 volts. The heat transfer coefficient of slow moving air is estimated to be 5 watts per meter squared Celsius. The ambient temperature of the system is 20 degrees Celsius, and the heat generated by the resistors was calculated to be 20 watts. To start the analysis, select Thermal Template. If you'd like to start from scratch, select Define New Geometry. If you have a file you would like to use, select Import Existing Geometry. After you have selected what you would like, click on Create Simulation Process. If you have selected Import Existing Geometry, you can then select your desired file. Once the simulation process has been generated, go to the Geometry tab. If you would like to edit your geometry in ANSYS, click on the Edit Geometry button. This will bring you to the workbench where you'll be able to edit your geometry. Once you're done, you can go to the top right corner and click on the X. If you'd like to replace your geometry with another version, click on the Replace Geometry button. Once you have made the necessary adjustments to your geometry, go over to the Mesh tab. This is where you can adjust the mesh using the Mesh slider. The size of the mesh will determine how many nodes will be created on the model. A higher mesh slider will have newer nodes and will be more accurate. You can make additional adjustments to using these settings here, but we will be using ANSYS auto-generated settings for this tutorial. Once you are done, you can go down and click the Generate Mesh button. Once the mesh has been generated, you can then go over to the Physics tab. This is where we will be able to simulate the environment that we specified. Start by going to Material Assignments. Make sure that the material selected is Structural Steel. Then, using Body Selection, select the top cover. Swap that out for the existing selection. Select the top cover once more, and then hide it. Now, add the diode and the switch to the existing selection. Click the Back button. Under Material Assignments, click Add, and then Aluminum Alloy. Select the body of the power supply as well as the capacitors. Now, add that to the selection. Go back to the Physics tab. Once more, under Material Assignments, click Add and Copper. Add the resistors, inductor, and transformers. Then add those to the existing selection. Under Solid Thermal Conditions, select Add, and then Convection. Using Body Selection, click the resistors. And then hide them. Now using Face Select, select all the bodies, and add that to the selection. Now, Show All, and select the showing parts of the top cover. Add those to the selection as well. Under heat transfer coefficient, set this as 5, and for the convection temperature, set this as 20. Once again, under solid thermal conditions, click Add, and go to heat generation. Click body selection, and hide the top cover once more. Select all seven resistors, add this to the selection, 
and select the heat generation to 20. Go back to the physics tab and then click on solve physics. Once the physics have been resolved, go over to the results tab. Then evaluate the results. Once the results have been evaluated, you now click on the results. The logarithmic color distribution helps illustrate the change in temperature. The average surface temperature of the power supply is 44.7 degrees Celsius. This is within the safe operating temperatures for this power supply.